Here's the walk around video I promised. The world's fastest Beretta. Just made a bragging rights sticker for it. Looks pretty sweet. So this thing's dirty because I drive it every day all summer. Um, it's a 3.4 out of a 2004 Impala. Um, quite a bit of work done to it at this point. The cam and heads are from uh, Wide Open Throttle Tech. It's a street strip cam. The lower intake manifold is also a ported deal from Wide Open Throttle Tech. The upper intake manifold is one that I made beforehand though actually. Um, just gasket match the runners. Opened up the throttle body to 65 millimeter. Uh, to match the TCE that's on there. Um, it has S and S headers that I think they stopped making like 10 years ago for a Grand Am uh, with a chop in the back of the three primaries and the crossover to point them down to clear the firewall on a Beretta because the Beretta firewall is quite a bit closer. Um, and then all the exhaust work to, uh, to make that happen under here. Um, the uh, Engine mount, so the engine mount is a 95, both the upper mount and the lower mount, which is a dog bone style. You can see the aluminum mount there. Um, these are both 95 style on this side. Over here, they're both 91 style um, with a billet poly mount. And then another dog bone down there. Um, my old Beretta was a 95. I actually did the 3400 swap. In the 95 originally then I bought this thing as a rolling shell and swapped over all the good stuff um, and added a bunch more good stuff at the same time when I did that like the headers and the five-speed um, the five-speed itself is the original 91 Muncie 282 uh, I pulled it apart rebuild it I put a limited slip in from engineered performance um, what you do is pop your factory limited slip out uh, send it to them and they convert it. They can clutches for it uh, with the spring pack in between. Um, this has got to have, I don't know, 20,000 miles on it, something like that, um, on the EP diff. And the last time I checked it, it still had 50 something pounds of breakaway torque from one wheel to the other, which is what he specs is brand new, basically. Um, and the miles on this thing have not been easy miles. <laughs> I've pounded on it every every chance I get, pretty much. Um, oh, the fuel rails here, that was another thing. So it's got 28 pound per hour uh, Trailblazer 4.2 liter fuel injectors. Um, and the fuel rail and fuel lines here ended up welding on, get that to focus, and fittings uh, on the fuel rail. And uh, it's a lot cleaner way to run them than the way the factory has this set up from the factory. They come over here and they've got a big loop that comes over. This is a steel part that runs back this way and then there's a loop that comes back. Uh, it's it's crazy the way that they have them set up for the factory. So that was a cleaner way to do it. Plus I had a, in the in the fuel rails themselves, there's a, uh, a captured O-ring that there's no way to get out. Um, and that thing was seeping fuel. So it was like, well, I guess the way to fix this is to eliminate the stock fuel lines. So it's a dash six AN now. Um, I have the factory O2 and then the wideband O2 uh, on the headers. Um, that's how I ended up tuning this thing. It's a OBD1, it's still the 7730 uh, ECM, the factory ECM that came with it. Um, I'm running the 92 B Fuzz was the name of the bin. Oh yeah, I put the used to have the computer hanging out here because that's an easy way to get to the chips but I just start putting all this stuff back together uh, the the B fuzz was a 92 3.1 five speed tune that's what this is based off from um, I bought a chip from a dude who was like a 3400 swap expert and it ran terrible so I ended up buying an auto prom um, put tuner pro on my laptop uh, and tune the thing myself I started off without the wideband and realized pretty quick that uh, tuning without a wideband is not ideal. So I bit the bullet, but put a wideband in it, and it makes all the difference in the world when you're trying to get it tuned right. I also spent some time on uh, 
gearheadefi.com. They've got a ton of information on tuning. Um, there's a lot of OBD1 gurus on there. And found out how to modify the ADX, uh, which is the definition file for the data stream, uh, in order to sort the data in a way that makes sense and makes it easier to tune your you know, I did a BLM and INT as a neutral 100 instead of neutral 128. So, uh, you know, rather than trying to figure out the math, like, okay, my BLM is at 134, 128 is neutral. How much fuel do I have to take out to get it back neutral? Um, I just did the math to make the BLM and INT 100 neutral. And that way, if the BLM was 105, you know, you take out 5% of the fuel and that gets you pretty close. That made it way easier to tune this thing. Um, I also made an extra uh, an extra thing to log in there. It's actually calculated from the BLM and INT and it multiplies the two of those together. So like if you had a BLM of 95, but an INT of 105, uh, you could be adding fuel or taking away fuel depending on which one you're looking at without actually needing to because those two adjustments were fighting each other. And if they were both at 100, it would be the same as 95 and 105. So um, that kind of stuff takes a little while uh, to figure out that part of the tuning, but makes a huge difference once you do. I've got this thing dialed in like mint now. Um, runs runs really good. Uh, I've, I've actually burned ships for some buddies who, you know, bought from this place or that place and the car still didn't run right. And, uh, I can just burn a ship without auto prom and send them off. Okay, we're back after a screaming baby distraction. Um, one thing I don't think we touched on was the clutch. This is a factory 3.1 car with the five speed. Uh, this is the factory 3.1 flywheel. The clutch is a spec two plus, um, which is the full face disc, stage two pressure plate. Um, Holds the same amount of power as a stage two, but it's more streetable. Um, I originally had a stage two on it uh, and smoked it in one day at the drag strip because the slave line from 90 to 91. So apparently Chevy had issues with uh, warranty repairs on 88 and 89 Berettas, uh, breaking axles. So they put a restriction bulb. Um, I heard this happen with the LS1 Camaros too. So they put a restriction bulb in the slave line, which kind of cushions the hit of the clutch to the engine a little bit. Um, and also from the uh, the power to the axles. And uh, that little bit of slip on every shift when you're really pounding on it uh, is all it takes to glaze a clutch in one day. I think I had like five, six passes. Uh, and that clutch was like fine on the highway, but if you were pounding on it, it would slip again. So I took the two out and put a two plus in. Um, and the main thing that I did to fix that was this braided 3AN uh, clutch line. Um, so it's got the pin lock fitting. Uh, pin lock fitting for regular GM clutch master cylinder and slave cylinder. Um, and it is has a 90 down here. Um, hey look, you can see the original teal. Uh, it has a 90 on it to clear. It's tight. You have to take the studs off the bell housing to change the slave while everything's installed. But uh, that that 2 plus that I've had in here was uh, well, let's see. It was the Beretta Bash that it was slipping. So since 2011, uh, so 10 years now, I've been pounding on this 2 plus and had no issues at all, even with the slicks. Uh, it hasn't given me a lick of trouble once I put the uh, the braided slave line in. Um, so I guess another thing I can show here, the the 91 computer uh, didn't have anything for cruise control in it. Uh, and I wanted to use the electric cruise control rather than the vacuum stuff that came on this 91 because it had a big vacuum canister here in the way. Um, so, originally I tried to use the 95 Beretta Cruise Control, but it wouldn't activate. Uh, I got the two wiring diagrams together, and uh, there was something There was a something from the ECM, and the pinout only said ECM from the Cruise Control. I don't know if it was 
uh, data itself or if it was 12 volt, 5 volt, ground, whatever, uh, but the cruise control wouldn't work. I did find that a 3.4 Camaro has the same end on here, so I can make that work with a 3.4 throttle body here. Um, has the same end on this side, and it has the truck end on the cruise control box itself. Uh, now my old truck was a 94 Z71 that had the electronic cruise, and that has the same same connector. You can't really see it in here for the uh, for the cable itself. So it's a truck cruise control unit with a Camaro 3.4 cable to work with an Impala uh, style throttle body in a Breda. Um, but uh, that wired up to the factory cruise control lever and all that stuff, and and the cruise works mint. I'm actually once I found out that the uh, truck stuff doesn't need an input from the ECM, I grabbed another one of those to use for my Camaro. That's doing Holly EFI, um, but I'm going to put cruise control in that the same way. Uh, and the 4.8 that I bought for a rear-wheel drive swap had the same cruise control box, so I should be able to add cruise control to uh, to that whenever I put that in a car. Um, so uh, it's kind of a nice little tidbit of information if you use a truck cruise control unit. You don't need any input from ECM to make it happen. It's just the VSS. It's a 12 volt and stuff. I could find a wiring diagram for it. Um, but it will work with kind of any standard uh, Chevy cruise control switch like I have here. And I got one out of a third gen Camaro uh, for my second gen Camaro to do the cruise control on that. Um, so that'll be a nice little hookup because uh, it's cheap. You can get like a Rostra kit, I think is the brand name, but it's, I don't know, three, four hundred bucks, something like that. Um, and you can get these for cheap, cheap, cheap at the junkyard if you want to wire them in.